Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We're going to look at the sensational She-Hulk number one by John Byrne. Before we dive into this, I want to remind everybody about Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July. The last Saturday in July, we want you to take your comps, your double comics, your all-ages comics, whatever you've got, and stock your local lending libraries, those little uh, mailbox-sized libraries that a lot of neighborhoods have. We know readers go there to get books. Let's introduce them to some comic books and uh, put a note in the comics that you leave behind where they can find more of them, your local comic book shop, bookstores, your library, wherever you can find more graphic novels in your neighborhood, include a note with those, and let's try to make some new readers at uh, Comic Book Christmas in July. Almost like free comic book day, let's start this new event and let's try to get some new comic book readers out there. I also want to ask everybody to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon to be notified when we post a new video. It'll give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. Kayfabe effect, whenever we talk about a comic, if you want to add it to your collection, so do a lot of other people, you want to be the first ones in line. So hit that notification button so you can track these books down before they disappear or the prices soar. And let our videos play through to the end. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans who haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It's how we grow the channel, and we appreciate your help so far on that part of our mission. But, Ed, we're here to talk about She-Hulk yeah. and John Byrne. Yes. This is uh, 1989. I was looking at this. For some reason, I thought it was a little bit earlier. But this is 1989. I think in 1990, he launches Namor. Mm-hmm. To go from X-Men and Fantastic Four and Superman to She-Hulk and Namor. This is within, you know, I mean, Superman was 86, 87, 88, possibly even into 89 that he's working on on Superman. It feels like now he's doing B-list characters at uh, at Marvel. Kind of a, a quick shift. Sure, but with that shift, as a seasoned veteran, you also know that uh, freedom comes with that, generally speaking, man. If this character, which had a failed comic in the past, if you could take that, the editors are probably going to let you stretch a little bit more than they will Superman, which he rapidly found out that, uh, I think it was Dick Giordano who said, we have two Supermans. We have the Superman on all the licensing, and we have your Superman. And, you know, that implies certain things. Uh, so by doing West Coast Avengers, not the real Avengers, Namor, uh, She-Hulk, Byrne can just breathe a little bit. Imagine, you, you, you've you done Marvel work, you know what I'm saying, man? Like, uh, That's an interesting perspective, because you've done those A-listers, now what's new? What, 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 what can you do now? And it is, if you can make these characters hits, it's almost the old Jack Kirby adage, right? Like, give me your book that's selling the least. Yes. And, and it, uh, maybe that's that's the approach here. And it's a proven model, you know, because you even have the, the Brits over at DC taking Animal Man. Whoever thought Animal Man would, would be anything or Sandman or... You know what I'm saying? So so it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Uh, this, this all comes back in like a wash of nostalgic memory because this is... A, I mean, this is a newsstand copy. Uh... Seeing this on the newsstand, seeing that it was a number one, uh, I was still at that age where I'm not buying Lady J's figure. You know what I'm saying? I'm not buying Tila. I'm buying Ram Man and shit like that. Like, I can't be fucked with, like, little girl toys and stuff. Uh, and I remember seeing this and being like, oh, it's a number one, but, nah, I'm not gonna get this one. Because, like, I had no real knowledge of, like, creators at that point or anything like that. I'm just like, who would buy a number one She-Hulk? Like, when you could get a Dale Keown issue of Proper Hulk. <laughs> and your money's true. limited, you know? Like, five bucks. This is also uh, a little more expensive, because comics were definitely about a dollar, if not 60 cents, and I could get five comics a week at, on Saturday if I if I um, starved myself. I wonder why that one's... Uh... Probably just because it's issue one, maybe. It's No, it's under the expensive prices. You know, like the, the 19.50 for your 13 issues. So... It is more expensive because these are like your dollar or seventy-five cent books. You know what it is? It's about print run. That's it too. That I think they're hedging that this is not going to be a good seller, so yeah. probably more of a direct market book or whatever. But this was definitely on the stands. Yeah, for sure. And um, what I remember about these because I didn't read these back then either. Yeah. But I would remember seeing these in either Wizard magazines or who knows online, whatever. And there was a meta element mm -hmm. where, like, you know, and you can see it on this very first issue where, like, the character's talking to us, the reader. You know, now's your second chance. If you don't buy the book this time, I'm going to come to your house and rip up all your X-Men. Humor 
and uh, breaking the fourth the fourth wall yeah. is what I remember about this book. Yeah, and yeah. I think I mean Burns' art looks good too. So yeah. you know, a good looking She Hulk, but also with this kind of uh, I don't know different different voice than you would see in X Men. X Men, you weren't doing this kind of fourth wall breaking. Yeah, yeah, and and we we now know this as being called like breaking the fourth wall. But John Byrne called it. She knows that she's in a comic. Like, okay. like, that's what he described it. Like, I feel like... That's a good description. I think that's accurate. Because there are times whenever I think she makes comments, even in this first issue, yeah, uh, along those effects. And I think that he's finding his way with that, how far you could stretch it and stuff like that. Also, like, uh, I think it was, it was like the end of, I think it's season two of Moonlighting, where it's, um, J- Judd Nelson is the villain, and the season finale, yeah, the season finale, um... When they're chasing him, it becomes it's a straight up chase, and then they're running by cameras and boom mics, yeah. and going through different scenes and sets and stuff like that. And then the scene ends, and then they're in their like moonlighting like office, and then they're hugging, and he's like, "I got something to tell you, but oh, it'll wait till fall, next fall." <laughs> right. And they leave the office, and then it's clearly a set like there's 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 wooden like panels holding up walls, and you see ladders and it's clearly the uh, the back of like a theater they leave the airplane hangar set kind of thing they're both they both go t- into the real cars you know she has like a k car so he's got like <laughs> some fucking sports car and uh see you next fall see you next fall like like that type of shit and, yes. and I feel like that was in the air, like where, where like those kind of things started getting played with in a big way. One of the first uh, examples of that that I saw was the Monkeys movie Head, mm. written by Jack Nicholson. But there's there's quite a few of those moments of like stepping out of scenes and, and you know, revealing sound stages. And I always think that would be a funny gimmick to do with uh, I always think it's Jim Lee's X-Men number one cover. Like, I would love to see the 3D model. <laughs> like, what does this look like if we actually set up the figures to create that finished 2D image? That'd be amazing, <laughs> because you'd have to build the figures into each other. Yeah, like, I think some would be extremely close to you. Like, it just wouldn't make sense. But, uh, you know, it's such a cool cover. But speaking of cool covers, I do think this is a really striking cover, too. It's a big figure. I often talk about near and far. You know, like, these covers got to work online now at, like, thumbnail size. This cover would work a thumbnail size. It's a it's a magazine cover. Yeah. Like, like w- what issue of Cosmopolitan magazine has ten characters in various poses with various co- yeah, colors and stuff like that, and 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 cityscapes behind you? Like this is a magazine cover. All right, let's uh, let's dig in. Second chance, of course. You know this is uh, She Hulk getting a a new issue or a new series. And Bob Wysak on inking, but burn writing and penciling. I I don't, comp I don't commend Bob Wysak's inking on this issue. Uh, this is some of the, this is some of the worst burn inking that 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 I could think. And it actually like the worst of it happens early on here. Yeah, this this the, page is not flattering. These textures back here, Wysak flattens out these hands and fingers, and you never really see this kind of nonsense hatching in the back of of burn in the backgrounds of burn comics it, the the line weight competes with the characters up front uh, i don't know if this is a rush job um but you even see it here it it, it doesn't even feel like john burn artwork um you still see those those hatches why a check looks good on burn on some things man on on i think uh, avengers west coast maybe he shows up in in namor i don't quite remember but I, I've seen good wire check on him. This is uh, this might be the worst ink job that I've ever seen on John Byrne. Man, that's that's funny you say that. Like, it's not something that I is. thought of when I was reading this. And you know, as I'm reading, I'm not paying as close attention. Maybe in the beginning, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting into the book. Yeah. I wonder if there is something to any of that. If there was a redraw, if there was something that changed that would make this late yeah because i always think like how can first issues be late it's exactly yeah, yeah don't schedule it until you know it's in hand like you see how thin the character like the holding lines are on these characters but this background line competes and is much bolder right than them like that that is that is hack work yeah let's uh let's keep going and see if it tightens it up. It, it, it does so I, it makes me wonder if this there, is something that was redone or there's maybe. an assistant that because this is background elements so a lot of these inkers have assistants and so you get some goofball to like do that but like it's no good it's awful 
you know, like these marks are terrible. It, it looks like what, like Joe Simon on, on Kirby with some of the drapery and stuff. This is a De Tom DeFalco's editor in chief at this point. Yeah. Probably the reason Byrne comes back, maybe. Uh, but uh, they they still have that, like, this is somebody's first issue, obviously, but yeah. explaining the uh, the powers. So she's like, you know, for somebody that can bench press 75 tons, this is not this is light lifting. You it's funny because they go out of their way to explain that she's just slightly less strong than the, uh, than the male Hulk. Fucking patriarchy. <laughs> Do you think that's computer, like printed out from a Mac or something? It looks like it. I don't know if that's showing up on screen, but there it definitely looks digital. Yeah. The, the edges of that. There's some 8-bit to it. Some pixelation. It's a weird effect, too. You know, like, I don't know what that is. It, it's almost a screen tone. Yeah. Or something. But or, like, doubling quite. up a screen tone. But, yeah. But it's got that digital pixelation that Im implies a printout. You know, the weird part is, how do you get the figure in there? It, uh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't know what that is. You've got me. Flashback to an early Incredible Hulk issue where Hulk was hiding out in the circus. So a little callback there with the juggling of, of an elephant. Do you draw this Hulk in, in Grand I, I didn't. I didn't draw that Hulk. <laughs> but I did read that issue yeah. a couple of times. And our ringmaster. Yes. Who That effect that we're speculating might be digital or whatever is his hip hypnotizing She-Hulk. From this point forward, the inking feels fine to me. It's those first couple of pages where it's pretty bad, but like this, this is settling into John Byrne inking. I wonder if this is the first John Byrne work that Wyacek ever inked. I, I, I don't know the answer to that part, but you hear about inkers talking about they need a couple of pages to get comfortable with, uh, with their new penciler. You know, if that's the case, then shame on everybody because like don't start on page one no. of issue one yeah if you're if you're sort of you know working on different tools and trying to figure that out like i, I even do that with uh some of the graphic novels i've done where it's like i'm going to draw some of the middle pages first yeah. and sort of get comfortable get in the groove and then go back because otherwise yeah these are the first pages everybody sees like you don't want those to be the pages that were experimental and didn't work the best yeah i just want to call attention to the off model king uh uh uh, Donkey Kong and the off model before they fully establish what Mario looks like uh, version of Mario in there also and that's when Mario's a bad guy you know in in uh, Donkey Kong what is the game system what is that I, um, it that looks kind like of portable Nintendo that looks like before the NES there was the game and watch and that looks like game and watches but they're, they're supposed to they came out in Japan before um before the uh nes so oh yeah it is uh, yeah it is game and watch yeah yeah you know what hold on real quick are you going to produce one of these things there's new ones ah okay so it's it's that they put out they put out a mario one and they put out a zelda and the old ones were just they were like those tagger electronics they were not this yeah but it's just cool where technology has grown but but the form factor is the exact same as you could tell yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Good uh, good prop, good visual aid, Ed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings. The second season of Red Room, all self-contained stories, issues one to four, now available in comic shops everywhere. Red Room, the anti-social network, the trade paperback collection of the first season of Red Room, now available in comic shops everywhere. Minus 28 countries where it's banned in 10 comic shops, but you can still request it there. And coming in September, the collection, the trade paperback of Red Room Trigger Warnings will be in stores in September. You can pre-order that now at your local comic shop or online wherever you buy your books. Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness in comic shops everywhere. The 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. I am writing, drawing lettering, coloring, the Grand Design treatment, retelling that 60-year history, and you can now pre-order the Hulk Grand Design oversized treasury collection, uh, about 40 extra pages in that. It'll be in stores before Christmas, but you can pre-order it now in your comic shops or in your bookstores wherever you're, you buy comics. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Heading to San Diego Comic-Con, get ready to see Scott Snyder himself by brushing up on your favorite Snyder comics with Comixology Unlimited. With Comixology Unlimited, you get unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, graphic novels, and manga titles, featuring content from over 125 publishers 
and thousands of independent creators from around the world, including exclusive titles from Scott Snyder. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial. For details, visit comixology.com slash unlimited. So back to the inking stuff, though. It does make me wonder, like, if those things were done last minute. Yeah. You know, if maybe Byrne had some some change of idea. Who knows? If pages were lost in FedEx and they were like, shit, we need these these three pages, they didn't show up. Yeah. It's hard to tell. It does seem like there must be some story there because you're right. This looks totally different inking than what we saw in the beginning. And again, first issue, so let's get our recap of the story involved here. I feel like that looks like a Hitachi magic wand. Is it because it's a she it's a she hulk comic? <laughs> that's the model, dude. That, that's the way it appears through about 50 retellings of this origin throughout the Hulk series. It always looks like that. This is one of those tough things like how he how he can um sell you on like the 3D of the of the breast with that kind of shading. Like when you're drawing this stuff and you have that outer shape, it's hard to communicate the 3D of it. Without without that part, this is not a successful version. I I do actually contend that there is still some tough ink in uh, there, but um, yeah, that hand's wild. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like an Eisner pant leg. Yeah, does not look like a hand. This is that um, Mobius. All the characters on the same plane. Yeah, he does that. Feet. He does that. It, on pre previously, there was like a shot like that where you have these full bodies. He builds the figures perfect. Like like he just really knows. The underlying structure. He's come up with a great set of tubes and cylinders to to like build his 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 characters. Again, continuing this origin story, Banner giving his cousin the uh, blood transfusion after gangsters tried to kill her, and then her turning into Savage She-Hulk whenever they come back to the hospital to finish the job. That shit happened in 1980, man. She she got she got off scot free, man, with just getting a little radiated blood. That was untested, you dig? Yes. Although Banner's uh, otherwise clean, right? Yeah, he's virginal. He's like Nikolai Tesla or Isaac Newton. Like, you're worrying <laughs> about, you know, complex problems. You're not worried about biological urges. And uh, this is She-Hulk now. Makeup and costume applied. They whitewashed her. So these 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 mysterious characters are paying the ringmaster like three million dollars to deliver She-Hulk and ringmaster's like well I think there's more we can do and so his plan bring in the audience hypnotize them and now shake the change how are you gonna get get money out of them (laughs) flip them over and shake out like their loose change it adds up (laughs) it adds up to like three thousand dollars I think he says they get but if you're getting three million in the payoff I don't know if it's worth uh messing around here hey speaking of like stuff that would be terrible to ink any of these kind of concentric circles and have them be more or less consistent yeah not a fun ink job it's absolutely true because you have to use um you have to use your uh ink compass which is a very tough thing to use especially in this day i don't know that fine liners were really uh acceptable to um draw on uh these kind of board. I don't know if a good microns and stuff existed. So when you use the ink compass, I don't know. Have you ever tried it? Like no. with So you you strap in your rapidograph. I don't think that's what they're using here. You don't? No, because there's a seam. If you look real close, there's a seam that runs through here. So I think they're using some kind of templates and doing half the template and then I switch see. to the next template. I see. Because you can see this like seam that runs along. But even with templates, it's a pain in the ass. Absolutely. And you know what? That, but that makes more sense. But like when you use that circle, uh, that the the compass for the ink you could you just have the weight of the pen can touch the paper you can't press on it at all because you're going to wobble it and fuck up your circle yeah and you would have to be resetting it over and over to keep it getting like wider Mm -hmm. you know it's not just circles it's actually the spiral yeah like I i feel like you can do circles and then just kayfabe it in the middle this all looks like circles until like you get to that middle piece and and then you could just lie. Yeah, but you can trace it. Like if you had a pen, like get the Sharpie out to face this comic, but you could follow like the pink, it never breaks. Mm. You know, like there's no complete circle there. I mean, once you get to the edge, I guess, you know, like you, you would only be running one circle at a time there. Right. But not something I'd want to draw. If, no I, was, fun. if I was Bob, I'd be pissed at uh, Burn for that. And then you got to draw the crowd. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. And, and I bet he uses, whatever he used to ink this, like in terms of pen, Mm-hmm. He used on that. 
because that's just a marker. Yeah. Uh, another second or two, and they'll all get their diplomas from Zombie High. John Burns wit on display. <laughs> that's that's a lot of drawing too. Yeah, that is turning a crowd upside down and shaking them. And I'm telling you, this ink in it feels golden age. You know. I wonder if there's more hands in it or something. I I, I think so, man. Because like, why a check does not do do that sort of thing. I think this is the kind of stuff that when burning it himself, yeah. It, it's fine. Absolutely. But I think it's like, that's a hard thing to interpret if you're if you're not the person who laid down whatever the pencils look like there. I give you that one. You know, you get that, but when it's pure drapery and stuff, come on now. <laughs> so these guys who are monitoring this situation, what happens is uh, somebody tries to take out She-Hulk with a wagon and they decide like, this is too risky for whatever they have in mind. This is another, like uh, they break a fourth wall here at some point when they say, we probably won't find out who these mysterious men are till issue three. Yeah, yeah, she, she hope we'll talk to the camera. We'll, we'll get there, we'll point that out. Cause that's, to me, that's like one of the memorable moments. Mm -hmm. As far as issue ones go, there's not, there's not too much here really. No, I was a little disappointed overall by it cause I was looking forward to reading this. I have a few issues of this series, so I may, I may stick with it and see if it, uh, if it picks up, it does feel like Byrne is trying some new stuff, and I commend him for that. You know, yeah, this sure. does not feel like Superman or Fantastic Four. Yeah, sure. But then again, I don't know how much of this he does, so I don't know if it, this sticks. You know, it's not like we're going to see this in Next Men or, or Namor. Um, where was it? It might have been a previous ad uh, on an earlier page, but they had Giant Size X Men and X Men issue 94 for like $96 a piece. In 1989, I did inflation cal calculator in in 2022 money. Uh, Giant size X Men one would be 225 dollars. What's that book sell for now? Because you assume it's probably like in a good condition that you're buying it totally. at that time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, thousands. It's so funny because it's like when I was a kid buying comics, that was the joke. Like this is what you. You know, I'll pay for my kids to go to college with these books. And then, like, it just it just bottomed out where it was like, your comics are worthless. Yeah. And now, like, we're back bigger than ever. For sure. And they're, and they're you know, tough to come by. But, like, I, I say that 225 bucks thing because, like, that is totally manageable. Like, yes. Like, in 1990, to have 90 bucks, that it equals that. Like, why not? It's two, it's two Nintendo tapes. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the time period because if you cut ahead to like 91, like a year or two later, you might have that for like first appearance. A cable might be 75 You're right. bucks or even 100 bucks in an ambitious shop. Yeah. Boy, there was a right choice there if you could choose between first cable or giant size X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> so she wakes up and pretty much traps the, the uh, circus of crime easy easy doing it's a bummer though that like this is she-hulk number one and most of the time she-hulk doesn't look like she-hulk yeah that seems like a questionable choice there's your standing on the panel border gimmick yeah once again and 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 they have to get out of this issue really really quickly so <laughs> it gets very verbose yeah a lot of exposition on this page and if you were gonna like do in an ass shot and if you were gonna do fourth wall stuff like would you not comment on the the fl floridity of the text, the volume of the text. Yeah, it would have been a good place to put a footnote there from uh, you know writer or editor commenting on that stuff. But that again, like I, that's what I, part of why I wanted to read this issue to see like how much of that fourth wall breaking happens, and if that's something that kind of gets more as the series goes on. And I would assume that he gets more comfortable with it. Right, he's he's like finding his footing, and it's kind of here, but it's kind of not. Here's the part, but but uh, it doesn't look like she's looking at you. It looks like she's looking off to this distance. Like, all you had to do is put the pupils back a little bit more. Yeah. Because she says, you readers will probably find out on the next page. Yeah. It'll be at least my third issue before I find out who it is. We get a glimpse of them, but I don't know who those characters are. No. The head men. Think that's a uh, reference to the Monkey's Head movie? <laughs> I was thinking of Headman from uh, late period G.I. Joe comics. All right, next issue, The Terrible Toad Men. And um, I'd be curious also to read anything Byrne has to say about this series, mm -hmm. like what he was looking at that kind of inspired him to go in this direction. Yeah. Because it does feel atypical. 
and you don't get that, you know, like a lot of times these first issues will have that text page. This right. would have been a good issue to have that kind of a text page. Now you just got the uh, Count Ducula. And, and it's a very rough, like if you ever saw the cartoon, it's a British cartoon. And the art style is, is really pretty interesting, you know. Like it, he's a offshoot, like Count Ducula was in Danger Mouse and then gets his own his own cartoon, and, and the artwork was very cool. Do you remember whenever we looked at that Marvel Age bullpen yeah. issue, uh -huh. how much Star Comics were like talked about in there? So now they're publishing ALF, Muppet Babies, Heathcliff, Count Duckula, and Dino Riders. Yeah. That's funny. There were still Star Comics around a little bit when I started reading. Yeah, same. Planet Terry is yeah. before that. And uh, just imagine the headache. So, so it's like nobody wants to be drawn those comics to begin with. Now it has to go through editors and licensees. That's a nightmare. Yeah, every step according to that Marvel age. That's a fucking nightmare, man. Yeah, I would not want to deal with that. But I, I am, I, I have more questions about She-Hulk after reading this first issue <laughs> <laughs> than I did going into it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun dusting some of these things off because uh, that image is so striking to me. It, it is. It, it's so evocative of, of like when I really am becoming very, very, very serious about like. I'm not buying as many toys as I am comics at this point. Also, like, it's just different than all the other comics then. Because what happens around this time, it's like, this is your dark, grim and gritty time period. This yeah. is your post-1986 Watchmen Dark Knight time where, like, every hero's in a trench coat and has five o'clock shadow and, you know, Wolverine is super popular and Punisher. So this was, like, flying in the face of those trends and maybe, you know, it wasn't that successful as a result. But it does seem like Burns trying something here, so kind of curious to hear a little bit more about that, what his thinking was behind it. Yeah, yeah, like you, you just have to push it further, you know, like like you have to go brush up on your Kurtzman and see some of the crazy shit he was doing in Mad Comics if you want to play Fourth Wall, because it was done better before, and just saying, oh, you guys might find out next next con next issue, like that's pretty weak. I wonder if he did some what the around this time too. I know he did like a, at least a cover, but I think he might have done some of those. So maybe he's just uh, that's where his head was. You know, maybe he did get a little, maybe a small vein of Kurtzman or something that uh, entered his his, uh, his his mind space. John, let's do the shoot interview. You good to go, Jimmy? <laughs> yes. Cartoonist kayfabe comic book Christmas in July is the last Saturday in July where we are going around town, filling up those free little lending libraries in in our neighborhood. Uh, full of comics, our doubles, our comp copies, and anything else that we can uh, scrape together to help sow the seeds of uh, creating more comic book readers. Uh, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. Uh, what else do we have out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design is in comic shops now, both issues Monster and Madness. Pick those up. And you can also pre-order the Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition Collection, which will be out in time for Christmas. But uh, it's already in Previews World, so let your comic shop know that you want a copy. It's the best book that I've made. I'm designing it in addition to writing and drawing it, and super excited to actually see a hard copy in print. I can't wait to uh, start showing that thing off. But uh, pre-orders are open now, and you can join me on Patreon.com slash JimRug to see more of my comics art. The Red Room Anti-Social Network trade paperback has in has been in stores for for uh, nearly a year, and I appreciate you guys uh, supporting that comic in such a big way. Uh, my ask for this year is to support uh, the Red Room Trigger Warnings trade paperback that is coming out in September. Pre-order that comic anywhere you can. Go to your comic shop, go on Amazon, whatever is convenient for you. If you are in a place where uh, the comic is banned in one of the 28 countries or 10 comic shops, that uh, the comic is banned. Go to my link tree in the description below and you'll be able to uh, order, pre-order current and future Red Room comics or you could hit up my Patreon for three bucks. Uh, you could get access to the archive, read all the comics that way digitally on your computer, iPhone, whatever. Uh, Jim, what else? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.